Welcome to a presentation of Euler's identity, also known as Euler's equation. Euler's identity is one of the most surprising and beautiful formulas you'll find in mathematics. Euler's identity is the equation e raised to the power of i times pi plus one equals zero. Notice how the equation contains three basic operations. We have addition, multiplication in the exponent, and also because of the exponent, we have exponentiation. The equation also contains five of the most famous constants. First we have the number zero, which is the additive identity, meaning if we add zero to any number, we get the same number. The equation contains the number one, which is the multiplicative identity, which means if we take any number and multiply by one, we get the same number. The equation also contains the number pi, where we can obtain pi by taking the circumference of any circle and dividing by the diameter. So pi is a constant, but it's also an irrational number, which is approximately 3.14159. The equation also contains e, which is the base of natural log. e is an irrational constant, just like pi, except e is approximately 2.71828. And then finally our equation contains the number i, which is the imaginary unit of the complex numbers, where i is equal to the square root of negative one. So the question is, why does e raise to the power of i pi plus one equals zero? This is actually the result of a special case of Euler's formula, where Euler's formula is e raised to the power of i x equals cosine x plus i sine x, where x is measured in radians. So let's take a moment and review why this equation is true using power series. So we'll begin with three known power series shown here below. We have the power series for e to the x, cosine x, as well as sine x. And power series are usually a topic of calculus two, but even if you haven't taken calculus two yet, I think you'll still be able to appreciate this discussion. So we'll begin with the power series for e to the x, and we'll determine the power series for e raised to the power of i x. So to do this, we'll substitute i x for x, which is shown here. Notice how we have one plus, instead of x, we have i x, and then instead of plus x squared divided by two factorial, we have plus i x squared divided by two factorial and so on. And now we'll simplify the terms in our power series. And for a quick review, remember, i to the first is equal to i, i squared is equal to negative one, i to the third is equal to negative i, i to the fourth equals one, and then the values start to repeat. So i x doesn't simplify, but for this term here, since i squared is equal to negative one, this third term becomes minus x squared divided by two factorial. In the next term we'd have i cubed, which equals negative i. So this term here simplifies to minus i times x cubed divided by three factorial. The next term contains i to the fourth, which equals one. So this simplifies to plus x to the fourth divided by four factorial. i to the fifth is equal to i. So we have plus i times x to the fifth divided by five factorial, and so on. Notice how some of the terms contain a factor of i and others don't. And for the terms that contain i here, I change the color to red. So now we'll group the terms that contain i, and we'll group the terms that don't contain i. So the terms that don't contain a factor of i are listed here, and the terms that do contain a factor of i are listed here, but notice how I also factored out the common factor of i. And we should recognize that this is the power series for cosine x, and this is the power series for sine x, which gives us Euler's formula. We've just shown that e raised to the power of i x equals cosine x plus i sine x, sometimes abbreviated as cis x. So going back to our original question of why e raised to the power of i pi plus one equals zero, we can now show why this equals zero using Euler's formula when x is equal to pi. So if we substitute pi for x, we would have e raised to the power of i pi equals cosine pi plus i times sine pi, where cosine pi is equal to negative one. We can determine this value on the unit circle or we're just looking at the graph of the cosine function shown here. Notice that pi, the function value is negative one and sine pi is equal to zero. Looking at the graph of the sine function, here's the point where x equals pi and notice how the function value is zero. And therefore e raised to the power of i pi equals negative one plus zero. So if we add one to both sides of the equation, 
we have Euler's identity, or Euler's equation, e raised to the power of i pi plus one equals zero. And I think you'll admit this has to be one of the most surprising and beautiful equations you'll see in mathematics. Thank you for watching.